It sort of looks like a lion. Or is it a monkey? It seems to kind of just sweep along the floor. Well, there is a legend that the Pekingese was um, the product of a lion who fell in love with a little monkey. And the union resulted in the Pekingese. Bold, independent, and courageous. In fact, the Pekingese survived the sinking of the Titanic. They're in their element when they're in someone's lap or right next to you being headed nonstop. Frequently, the Pekingese is called the large dog in a small body. It's a fearless dog. You back him into a corner, he's going to let you know, I'm coming out and I'm coming at you. Hey, 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 hey. Way back when, Chinese emperors used these dogs to act as guards. Two would bark to announce their master's entrance, and two would hold the ends of the royal robes in their mouths. And like other small dogs, the Pekingese were used as portable human heaters. The emperors and empresses used to carry them around in the big ginormous sleeves of their imperial robes. The Pekingese is one of the oldest dog breeds in the world. There was a time when um, ordinary citizens had to actually bow down to the Pekingese. That's how revered they were. Back then, only royals could own these pups. And if someone tried to hurt or steal a Pekingese, he'd be put to death. Today, these pups are just as dignified and still honored companions. So what's unique about these little royal hounds? Well, first, it's that huge flat head. Pekingese actually are a type of breed known as brachycephalic. Um, and that's a really big word, but what it basically means is smush face. So if you look at them from the side, um, it basically looks flat across. Other cool stuff? The coat, it has two layers. The top is long, straight, and coarse, while underneath, it's thick and soft. There was so much coat on this dog, sometimes you can't tell what's the head and what's the tail. And it's the Pekingese short, bowed legs that basically keep it close to its master. They have itty, itty, bitty little legs. So these are not the sorts of dogs that are going to be out in the country. They're not going to want to run through the woods. Grooming is certainly important for this look-alike lion. They need to be shampooed regularly, brushed daily, and eyes and wrinkles need to be kept clean. This is a dog who has such a dense, thick coat that even a week gone by without grooming means that poor dog is probably going to be very mad at. Training? Well, that can be tough. In fact, don't hold your breath while calling them to come. They usually won't. Hey, Ru. And the Pekingese have health issues. You, you probably should put aside um, some money for ongoing vet bills. These dogs tend to have compensatory heart issues. Congestive heart failure is the leading cause of death for Pekingese. And as far as making a Pekingese a family pet, they're good, but not with little kids. They're not the best dog around children, though, because they don't like to be messed with. They like to be the child of the house, so they like to have your attention. So in general, Pekingese don't need a big yard and do fine living in a small home. They have respiratory health issues, their coat needs regular grooming, and because they're stubborn, training is difficult. But they do make good pets for lounging older families. They are an excellent lap dog. That's pretty much all they want to do in life. That's pretty much what they were bred for.